Good afternoon. Welcome to the weekly livestock market update. I'm Brownfield Anchor reporter Megan Grubner with this as always to talk all things markets. University of Missouri, Scott Brown. Good afternoon, Scott. Happy Friday to you. Happy Friday, Megan. It is a busy day for us. We're going to talk farm income. We're going to talk supply and demand. We're going to talk monthly trade data and take a look at the consumer side of things. Uh, We might also talk a little chicken wings and a big game coming up this weekend. But to kick things off, let's recap what happened this week in the markets. Yeah, if we start on the cattle side this week, uh, 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 cash-fed cattle were $3.30 higher this week. Those feeder cattle markets were 4 to 8 higher generally, some instances of even higher than that uh, in the 6 to 7 weight category in particular. Uh, On the future side, the April live cattle futures contract was uh, down 15 cents while the March feeder cattle contract was up uh, 42 and a half cents. Uh, choice box beef prices were uh, nearly $2.10 above a week ago. Uh, really loins led the way uh, uh, to those higher uh, box beef prices. On the hog side, cash barrels and gilts were 40 cents higher this week. The April lean hog features contract was down $3.30, while the pork cutout value was up uh, just about 20 cents this week. All right. As we take a look uh, at weekly slaughter numbers, I think we're going to be in a completely different trend than we possibly have been the last couple of years. Talk to me. Talk to me a little bit about cattle slaughter numbers and hog slaughter numbers for this week. Yeah, boy, Megan, slow run this week, right? So uh, for the week ending February 11th, USDA is telling us a run of 630,000 head of cattle this week. That is 11,000 head below where we were a week ago, and 41,000 head below where we were a year ago. As you and I go through this uh, 2023, I'll be really curious to see where those year goes uh, get us uh, as we go through time. On the hog side, uh, a run this week of 2.498 million head of hogs this week. That is down 97,000 head from a week ago and down 15,000 head from the same time a year ago. When we get in a little bit further into 2023, we'll talk a little bit more about year over year comparisons. As we talk, look at this now, though, how, uh, <laughs> I guess, like how much of an indication of how short we are and how small uh, the cattle herd could be uh, as we're setting up and looking at these types of numbers? Yeah, so j- just a little precursor, you know, you look for the first uh, four or five weeks here, 2023, uh, cattle slaughter down 1%. That's ju- just the beginning. Um, of, of what's getting ready to happen. Uh, so, so I expect some pretty significant uh, uh, reductions in slaughter. We're just starting that, to, to be honest, in terms of uh, you know where placements eventually get us uh, to, to lower uh, slaughter-ready cattle. So it's going to be interesting. And then on the hog side, you know, I think we will be higher uh, in slaughter as we go through this year, but not, not significantly higher. But we'll watch those numbers uh, as, as we look ahead as well. USDA gave us our, our its first 2023 projections on farm income. Let's talk a little bit about those numbers this week. Yeah, so headlines this week uh, when when USDA gave us that first 2023 estimate, uh, uh, a uh, 136.9 billion dollar estimate of farm income for the year that we just started, Megan. That is uh, down nearly 16% from the record $162.7 billion uh, that we saw in in 2022. Uh, When you look at what USDA is telling us uh, in terms of those components, uh, expenses uh, up uh, $18.2 billion this year relative to last, while receipts are lower uh, when you look in particular, they're going to tell us uh, their estimate of of crop cash receipts are down uh, nearly eight billion dollars, and uh, livestock cash receipts down fourteen point seven billion dollars. So uh, they're they're expecting more of a decline uh, on that livestock side. You know, when you look individually for a second at what makes up those livestock cash receipts, all categories down, with the exception of cattle. Uh, they're suggesting a $2.1 billion increase in cattle receipts. So although we're going to have fewer marketings in elastic demand, they expect prices will go up more than marketing's decline, giving us that $2.1 billion increase in cash receipts. 
I always like seeing how uh, the farm income <laughs> changes and the projections change uh, from USDA throughout the year. So this is a good starting point. It'll be plenty for us to look into and watch uh, as we move ahead through the new year. Suffice to say, at the end of the year, we will not be, at, our USDA will not be at 136.9 and give scenarios they they higher get and lower. <laughs> if they hit their projection at the beginning of the year, do they get like a party? <laughs> matches up. We'll, 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 we'll give them uh, kudos if that's where they get in, uh, <laughs> at the end of the year. How's that? All right. Okay. So let's talk supply and demand numbers. Uh, kind of a snoozer, really, this report was this week. Um, and no really big changes on the livestock side of things. Yeah, th that's that's true. You know, Megan, uh, when, when you look at what USDA said for February, uh, WASDE versus where they were in January, I don't see a lot of big changes here. Uh, they, they did reduce uh, chicken production a little bit, but pretty modest uh, decline, frankly. A um, few, few changes on the price side, but, but nothing uh, too... Uh, uh, or shattering, I guess I should mention, you know, $1.50 lower uh, barrels and gilts uh, in the February uh, report relative to January for 2023. I think that reflects some of the current weakness we're seeing in hog prices. Uh, $25 higher soybean mill prices uh, this month jumped out to me uh, from USDA in the year that we're already in. So the 22-23 crop year, USDA is now telling us we're going to average $450 a ton on soybean meal. So higher cost on that front, I guess if you're a hog producer, you might have said that this is not such a friendly report given uh, we get higher feed costs and lower uh, barrel and gill prices. One tidbit uh, I might raise out of this uh, re report, if, if USDA is correct in their 2023 projections of exports, this will be the first back-to-back -back years of declines in the combination of beef, pork, and chicken exports since 1984-85. Some of us were barely born then. Some of us who are watching were probably not even born yet. That's a very long time. <laughs> it, it, it has been a long time since we've been back to back now. Let, let's, let's be clear. We had some pretty strong growth in 2020, uh, 2021. And, and so I think some ways we're getting maybe back on trend. So I don't want I don't want to make too much out of it, but we don't back to back very often. And 84, 85, those years weren't the best for us. It just reminds me to say, you know, export weakness is not good for us uh, in the livestock industry. And definitely not good for the price picture, right? That's correct. It, 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 and, you know, as much as you and I get optimistic about cattle prices for 2023, um, Weaker export demand would be another thing that would take the shine off of what otherwise might be record prices. All right. Monthly trade data uh, is a really interesting, uh, is always interesting to get it this month, right? So it's the the full, we have a full year under our belt when we're looking at these numbers. And there's two stories here, right? There's the volume story, but there's the value story. And especially on the beef side of things, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, so boy, uh, the, the beef industry has looked back and feel pretty happy about how things turned out in 2022. Uh, when you look at, at total uh, U.S. exports of beef, 2.4% higher in volume terms uh, relative to 2021. And you look at it in value terms, 10.5% higher. Just reminds you that we got more volume and we were pushing higher prices at consumers around uh, the, the globe. So pretty strong demand. And, uh, you know, you look at where that came from. Uh, I, I will be remiss not to talk about China uh, in, in this discussion. So 15.6% higher in, in volume terms to China, 21.7% uh, higher in terms of, of value. So the Chinese were helpful. Um, you know, I, 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 for a minute, will say, you know, if you just look back over the last decade, 2022 compared to 2012, uh, just, just just to make ourselves feel good, uh, Chinese exports of U of U.S. sorry Chinese imports of U.S. beef, three hundred eight point one percent higher. Um, now that's not the only piece of that news. You know, overall we were thirty percent higher in in volume of all destinations of U.S. beef. So really good news on that front. Uh, pork maybe 
not not as good news. And China again is going to be the story that we talk about because we have a situation where, in volume terms, U.S. pork exports were down 8.6% in 2022 relative to 21. A little better in in value terms, only down 5.3%. Uh, when when you really look at you know what caused that, it was a 26.2% decline in uh, pork exports to China. Uh, that was a uh, 19.9% decline in in uh, value terms. So I I uh, ex- expect uh, some some growth um, maybe in in 2023, but uh, China continued to to trim back as uh, ASF and a little weaker consumer demand affected things in in China. And really, I would assume too part of their regrowth, right? And the Chinese. Uh, hog herd has something to do with with that, in addition to obviously the ASF um, issue a little bit. Yep, a- a- absolutely. And I sometimes say, you know, so 2023 could be more positive here. Is we really don't know what happens in the Chinese coming out of the, the the COVID issues that they face of late, and whether there's some stronger demand. But one could certainly tell that story. All right, let's talk consumer sentiment. Uh, this is actually a, a pretty relative to last month and last year. A, a pretty good story to, to to end the day on this Friday. Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, when you look at consumer sentiment uh, for, for the preliminary results for February, uh, relative to where we were in January, they're up 2.3% uh, month over month, uh, up 5.7% uh, relative to where they were a year ago. So some good news on that front. And when you look at the components of that overall index, the current economic conditions piece of that index, uh, month over month was up 6.1%, Megan, uh, re- really strong, up 6.5% uh, relative to a year ago. So it just reminds me to say, uh, we, we certainly are seeing some pretty strong current uh, economic conditions driving that. Uh, expectations, uh, they were actually down uh, uh, 0.6%. So the other piece of that uh, overall index um, I, I think inflation continues to weigh on consumers with, are we going to talk about higher interest rates? Uh, so, so, I, so I think there, there's some concern. Uh, but even though the month over month expectation index was down year over year, it was up 4.9. So we're in a much better place than we were a year ago. I think it's because chicken wing prices are down and bacon prices are down. That's right. So those, those products that, uh, <laughs> you and I hold near and dear have certainly uh, found their way to some lower prices and, you know, gosh, maybe we'll even get egg prices to come down as we go further into to 2023. This, this idea of, so wholesale prices for a lot of these products have come down uh, much sooner, but the stickiness of retail prices, I believe are finally starting to potentially see in the coming months uh, further declines as, as they, uh, ease a little bit from uh, the some of the record prices that we've seen of late. I will tell you, though, I don't think on the chicken wing side of things, it really matters how much they are. My husband went to the grocery store today, two of them, and they were wiped out of chicken wings everywhere. So, um, so, so buying crazy. chicken wings on Super Bowl week, uh, I am not surprised to find some stores that are barren in terms of chicken wing availability. <laughs> And I will tell you, Brian makes fantastic chicken wings. So like, it's a staple in this house. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know you will be tuned in to the big game on Sunday. Uh, before we get out of here, I'm going to tie this in like Eagles or birds, Kansas City's home of barbecue, whatever. Uh, what's your Super Bowl prediction for this weekend? Well, undoubtedly, it's it's a Chiefs victory uh, th- this weekend, Megan. Uh, I, I wish I was as good as Travis Kelsey in uh, repeating his often used uh, 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 slogan about uh, the, the the Chiefs, but I'll, I'll avoid trying to embarrass myself here. But uh, it's it's for sure a Chiefs victory. Uh, uh, I, I am glad to see Patrick Mahomes get his second uh, uh, Super Bowl ring uh, in in the upcoming Sunday event. All right, here's to that. I will, you know, I don't, the Packers lost, 
didn't even like have a chance. And then the Bengals lost also. So we're just here. Uh, so we don't get fined. Just kidding. <laughs> I, I am just enjoying the, the ride on the top side, given the Chiefs have had their share of uh, long droughts uh, pr- prior to uh, what's been so great the last few years. All and right. you see my Chiefs red on today. I, I do. I wasn't even going. I wasn't. I wasn't going to acknowledge it. It's fine. <laughs> All right. It's always great to see you. Uh, next Friday, a little bit lighter day for us. What are we looking for next week? Yeah, Megan, we'll get retail prices out next week. Uh, and and then uh, also information from USDA on the number of farms and, and the amount of land in farms will come out as well. Uh, we'll, we'll see what kind of information uh, is in store out of that report. Have a great weekend. Uh, I expect a gloating text from you Sunday evening uh, post game. So I will talk to you then. Sounds good, Megan. So every weekly livestock market update delivered your email box every Saturday morning. Go to brownfieldagnews.com. You can also submit questions and comments. And if you want to check out what's going on in the commodity markets, check out John Parkins Market Minute every afternoon. Have a great weekend. I'm Megan Grubner for Brownfield.